We talk so much about the incredible celestial marvels scattered around the cosmos that we sometimes forget how wonderful our very own solar system can be. While we think we know just about everything around our neighborhood, there are a lot of unanswered questions about the solar system that still baffle the greatest minds across the globe. Even in our solar system, we've just been able to understand the tip of the iceberg, and that's because telescopes can only give us a tiny portion of what's really out there. There have been man-made instruments sent into different parts of the solar system, but we've only made sense of the basics. What lies beyond the boundary of our understanding? And what mysteries does our very own solar system hide? One seemingly mysterious region is the outer limits of our solar system. In the region of asteroid-filled space known as the Kuiper Belt, NASA's New Horizons has a glimpse of a long-sought structure in the outer solar system. The ALICE UV spectrometer on the probe could have found evidence of the hydrogen wall, a dense area of hydrogen on the boundary between the solar system and interstellar space. Leslie Young of the Southwest Research Institute and New Horizons revealed in an interview, we're seeing the threshold between being in the solar neighborhood and being in the galaxy. The solar wind exerts an outward pressure on space, even though it has low pressure. At some point, the wind is no longer strong enough to push back against space. This boundary is known as the heliopause, which marks the official edge of the solar system. In theory, neutral hydrogen atoms moving through interstellar space should slow down when they reach the heliopause, which is like a neutral hydrogen traffic jam that builds up next to the heliopause. From 2007 to 2017, New Horizons saw a bright ultraviolet glow called the Lyman Alpha Line, made up of solar photons hitting hydrogen atoms and bouncing away. This happens as sunlight travels through the solar system. But there's a mysterious source of energy in the signal New Horizons picked up that's much farther away. 30 years ago, this was also detected by Voyager. New Horizons is the first probe that has had the same chance to take measurements of this phenomenon since 1989. The best explanation for it is the hydrogen wall. The researchers wrote in their paper, both sets of data are best explained if the observed ultraviolet light is not only as a result of the scattering of sunlight by hydrogen atoms within the solar system, but includes a substantial contribution from a distant source. This distant source could be the signature of a wall of hydrogen formed near where the interstellar wind encounters the solar wind. The only way to be sure is to do more research, as the background glow could be something else. According to the paper, there will be ALICE observations around twice a year for the foreseeable future. Voyager 1 has already gone beyond the solar system. In 2013, it broke through the heliopause and is still sending signals back to Earth as it moves farther and farther away into the infinite universe. Voyager 2 is in the helio sheath, the outer part of the solar system where the solar wind is slowed by gas from other stars. It's expected to reach the heliopause sometime before 2030. Even though New Horizons won't reach that point until later, it may be able to take more observations as it glides through. Our scientific efforts live on despite the fact that humans may come and go. New Horizons has other work that needs to be done. It's already told us about Pluto, which it flew by in 2015. The probe's next encounter was with a Kuiper Belt object called Ultima Thule. The probe explored this object in January 2019. At a rate of about 300 million miles per year, the New Horizons spaceship is speeding away from the solar system deep in the Kuiper Belt. Another structure that exists in this same region is the Oort Cloud, the most distant region of our solar system. Even the closest objects in the Oort Cloud are thought to be many times farther from the Sun than the outermost parts of the Kuiper Belt. Unlike the orbits of the planets in the Kuiper Belt, which lie mostly in the same flat disk around the Sun, the Oort Cloud is thought to be a huge spherical shell surrounding the rest of the solar system. 
It is a big bubble made of icy pieces of space debris the size of mountains and sometimes larger. It is possible that the Oort cloud contains billions or even trillions of objects. Scientists think that the Oort cloud is the source of most long-period comets because the orbits of these comets are very long. For example, Comet C-2013A1 Siding Spring, which came very close to Mars in 2014, will not come back into the inner solar system for about 740,000 years. The Oort cloud is so far away that it's easier to describe it in astronomical units, which are far greater than miles or kilometers. One astronomical unit, or AU, is the distance between Earth and the Sun. Pluto has an elliptical path that takes it close to 30 AU from the Sun and up to 50 AU. It is thought that the inner edge of the Oort cloud is between 2000 and 5000 AU from the Sun. The outer edge might be 10,000 or even 100,000 AU from the Sun. That extends one quarter to almost halfway between the Sun and the nearest neighboring star. Though scientists think that long-period comets seen among the planets come from the Oort cloud, no object has been seen in the distant Oort cloud itself, so it is just a theory for now. But it is the most accepted explanation for the origin of long-period comets. The theory behind its formation says that gravity from planets pushed many icy planetesimals away from the Sun. A planetesimal is an object formed from dust, rock and other materials. The word has its roots in the concept infinitesimal, which presents an object too small to see or measure. Planetesimals can be seen from a few meters to hundreds of kilometers. The term refers to small bodies formed during the creation of planets. One way to think of them is as small planets, but they are much more. The borderlands of the solar system were likely where they settled because the planets couldn't perturb them anymore. The Oort cloud is what we now call it. The Oort cloud could also capture objects that didn't form in the solar system. Details of the Oort cloud are still a little scarce, as most of them have been theoretical. There is evidence that the early solar system had a gap between its inner and outer regions, as a new study emerges with insightful data. The cosmic boundary might have been caused by a young Jupiter or an emerging wind. This might have shaped the makeup of infant planets. In the early days of the solar system, a protoplanetary disk of dust and gas rotated around the Sun and eventually formed the planets we have today. Scientists at MIT and elsewhere have done a new study of ancient meteorites that shows there was a gap in the disk of dust and gas around 4.567 billion years ago, near the place where the asteroid belt is now. Benjamin Weiss, Professor of Planetary Sciences in MIT's Department of Earth, Atmospheric and Planetary Sciences, or EAPS, said in a statement, Over the last decade, observations have shown that cavities, gaps and rings are common in disks around other stars. These are important but poorly understood signatures of the physical processes by which gas and dust transform into the young sun and planets. The cause of the gap in our solar system remains a mystery. It is possible that Jupiter was an influence. As the gas giant formed, its huge gravitational pull could have pushed gas and dust away from the center, leaving a gap in the growing disk. Another possibility is that the winds came out of the surface of the disk. Early planetary systems have strong magnetic fields. When these fields interact with a rotating disk of gas and dust, they can create winds strong enough to blow material out, leaving behind a gap in the disk. Even if we don't know where it came from, a gap in the early solar system probably acted as a cosmic barrier, keeping material on either side from interacting. The composition of the solar system's planets could have been shaped by this physical separation. For example, gas and dust on the inner side of the gap came together to form terrestrial planets, such as the Earth and Mars, while gas and dust on the other side of the gap formed icy planets like Jupiter and its other gas giants. Lead author of the study and EAPS graduate student Kawe Borlina said, 
It's pretty hard to cross this gap and a planet would need a lot of external torque and momentum. So, this provides evidence that the formation of our planets was restricted to specific regions in the early solar system. We've just scratched the surface when it comes to understanding our very own celestial neighborhood. But what's really intriguing is that even though we've looked to the star millions of light years away, we've not been able to clearly understand our surroundings. The solar system in itself is enormous, spanning almost 4 billion miles, and I think 4 billion miles is just about enough to hide a few secrets. When we talk of Mars or Jupiter or even Pluto, we think they're relatively close by, but in reality, with our current propulsion technology, we would take 6 years to reach Jupiter, about a year to reach Mars, and 10 years to reach Pluto. That's a lot of time. Time that many humans don't have, but unless we have the capabilities to study these mysteries physically in the future, we might not be able to answer a lot of those burning questions. Hopefully, we get more data sooner rather than later. Till then, let us know in the comments below what other mysteries lurk in the shadows of our solar system. When do you think we'll be able to get to the bottom of it? And, as always, Thanks for watching Space Age.